Hello, hello. Hey guys, so last week I released this game I created in two weeks without a game engine. The game is playable in the browser for free. Please play it. <laughs> now if you haven't watched episode 1 yet, I highly recommend that because in this video we're gonna take what I did, we're gonna use it up a bit, we're gonna make it look and feel badass. We're gonna take this ugly thing here and make it look like the... Why do I hear music? Uh oh. Mm. Look at this. It's a beautiful day. It's a bit cloudy, but I like it anyway. Look at the flowers swinging in the wind. Better swing my shovel. Whoa, look at the particles. I'm burning in grass and gravel. Listen, I got some indicators indicating what you need to bring. Yep. I teach a player, but this is what you do. Yep. You don't tell them anything, so they will never know what to do. Yeah, that's what I did this week. Welcome back to my double, guys. How do you turn something that looks like this into this? Well, first we need to know why we need to change it. Let's do an experiment. Let's not touch the keyboard for a moment. A big reason the second scene looks more alive is because there is movement on the screen. Something is always happening, the scene feels dynamic. This looks like a stale image. It looks a bit dead. The sprites aren't that interesting either because they are very blocky. We humans enjoy seeing different shapes, textures, colors. I think this looks man-made. The first thing I did this week was to redraw some textures. That combined with just animating the player position using linear interpolation makes a very big difference. I feel like just adding this slurp thing makes the game feel much nicer and with the updated graphics as well. Lurping done! Next, let's animate the game over text. It's quite boring right now. Oh. I want this to like bounce around a little bit. Let's try it out. Oh, no, not sign. Sign! Oh my. Get the timer as float at 32. Just putting random numbers here. Take that multiplied by the distance. What? No, not as flow. So silly. As seconds. <laughs> hey, it works! Look! Dude, when I resize the window, the lurping actually happens. That's... that's cool. The game does look a little bit better, but we still have the issue of this looking like it's a picture. Let's make it come alive. No, 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 no! One moment, please. Now we hit 200 subscribers! Thank you, guys! Back to the video! I decided to add flowers and bushes. They fit the theming of the location. And by having them scattered around the scene makes it look less blocky. It looks more like the scene naturally grew to look like this. When programming games, this is usually what happens when you try out your stuff for the first time. Alright, it compiled, it's the first time, oh wait. You know what, this is probably gonna crash, I hope. You know what, it might not actually. What? Oh, <laughs> you see something is going on up there? <laughs> just wait guys, just wait. Glorious. That's what I wanted. Now placing out bushes and flowers manually would make it super annoying to edit the map files. Oh, by the way, this is how I store the level data. It's honestly not too hard to work with. Anyway, to avoid having to place down even more numbers for foliage. Let's add some flowers. Uh, what number was that? Uh, nine for a bush, six for a flower. Wait, what happened to the level? Wait, is this a platform? Ah! I decide to randomly place them. It is not that advanced. I simply go through each grass platform in the scene. I flip a coin and decide if I should spawn foliage above it. 
If I should spawn, then I flip another coin to decide if I should place one or two plants. Now if I didn't do that last part, the levels would look like this. It's not too bad, but to make it look more naturally placed, sometimes placing two instead of one makes a really big difference. Oh, it's a beautiful day. I'm going to... I just wanna give a big thanks to everyone who played the game. I got a lot of great feedback and <laughs> Cud found this endless loop thing. Which is bad, so we're gonna need to fix that. I have to say the feedback I get from just watching other people play or you telling me about things that are hard or... It helps a lot. This is the second day of just tweaking the game up and look with how few things you can add that makes the game just so much better. Now surprisingly adding the clouds took a longer time than adding the foliage. The clouds wasn't the problem though, it was something else. <laughs> That's a hint. Alright guys, I got the clouds working. It took me 40 minutes to get the clouds working and I was programming quite fast I must say. I think it's a nice touch. The clouds go outside of the, um, the black borders and that's not good. <laughs> so instead of clearing the screen black I should probably draw a quad right here and right here. A bazillion years later and I fixed the border issues. I don't even have any footage of that because it took me a longer time than it should have. I cry. Now the game is already feeling kind of great but it's missing something. Explosions! Pew 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 pew! Vim 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 vim! Alright, let's get started. I don't think I've ever done my own particle system, so this will be interesting, but up until now I've written everything in one single file, and as you can see, it's starting to grow quite big. At some point I want to move this out, but it's really not necessary. I'm gonna put the particle system in its own file because I have a feeling like it's gonna be quite big. I haven't learned yet <laughs> how to use different files, so time to look on some tutorials. The programmer inside of me really wants to make a super great fully featured particle system. I should not do that because I know it's gonna take a lot longer time to do. It's just an itch I have as a programmer. But Tang Tan, why are you making your own particle system? There are already people who've already built a system like this in Rust. That's a good point. Now the purpose of creating this project was to learn the Rust programming language. Now creating my own particle system is surely gonna be not too easy. Spoiler alert, it was not. Let's see how other people have done this. Rust particle system, here we go. They're using the same thing I built. Look at this. I have a value getter. They have a value generator, but they made it generic. They have a fixed value, I have a single value. They have a range, I have a range. It's the same thing, look. Dude, this, this looks very solid, this code. I'm, I'm happy I wrote this. Now we see that some of the ideas I had matches with the ideas of other libraries. I like these comments. Aha! We have two matrixes cases here. The trick is that our property can... Hmm. There's a lot of things I'm not showing here. I spent multiple days breaking on the system. Anyway, <laughs> I implemented some particles off screen. We have digging, walking, blood particles, so it took me about 10 minutes to implement this cloud particle when you land. I think it looks pretty... pretty okay. The biggest thing particles gives us is satisfying feedback. When I perform an action, I'm rewarded with juicy particles dancing on the screen. Falling off a ledge, this particle indicates where you landed, but most importantly, that it was an impactful fall. Digging? Well, you can see yourself, it's quite fun. Dying from skeletons? Fun! Well, I should say less annoying, because look at those beautiful particles. Walking? Every step the player takes, you can feel the boots of the player digging into the ground, making grass particles fly up. How far can we take this? Breathing? A puff of air, indicating the player is alive. Well, I didn't actually do that, I... I probably could though. Hmm. Hey, so if you wanna try my game out, there's a link in the description. Also, I added a lot of particles into the game, so I probably butchered the performance. Please give me feedback. Leave a like if you liked it, tell your grandma, tell your mama. 
Okay. <laughs> See you soon. Bye.